looks and feels and sounds like this. Some people have accused the latest Vanquish of not quite delivering on its promise. There are those that say it's not quite fast enough, considering it costs the very thick end of £200,000. And there are others that accuse it of looking, well, a little bit vulgar on the styling front. But I'm not sure I agree with that at all. Not in this beautiful green of this test car. And look, there is 565 horsepower from a 6 litre V12 under that bonnet and a really fast paddle shift gearbox with which to access it. And this car only weighs 1700 kilograms. Yeah, that's a lot by small car standards, but not when you've got 565 horsepower. That is why this car can do this. way the other side of 180 miles an hour and handling wise wow this car is really really nicely balanced it's a lovely old-fashioned slightly rear-wheel drive front engine GT car which always means you get the best kind of balance from a car and it means you can do this kind of thing in it all day long if you want I mean what There is no way that you could do this kind of thing in a car like this unless the handling was really properly sorted, and it is. There's a little touch of understeer, which is nice, that just gives you this little kind of safety net. And then <laughs> if you turn all the right systems off and you press the sport button, <laughs> you can just muck about with this car for hundreds and hundreds of yards. The only trouble with the new Vanquish is that there is a previous Vanquish and that car was absolutely bursting at the seams with soul and atmosphere and charm and call it what you want. So I guess the only way to tell if the new car lives up to that is to get the old one on as well. really vividly when the Vanquish first appeared and it just seemed like such a monster at the time and if you look at the numbers that it produced and what it cost it really was a bit of a monster it cost £158,000 this is back in 2003-04 it had 460 horsepower from its 6 litre V12 and it weighed well, with a driver on board, over 1,900 kilograms. It really was a big old beast of a GT car, and it still feels like that. But do you know what? There's something about the old Vanquish that I really quite like. The engine, I mean, it's, do you know it's not that far off the new car? Obviously, it's nowhere near as powerful, but the sound it makes, <laughs> the response it has, and the performance it delivers, particularly in the mid-range. I don't know, it doesn't feel that old to me in a straight line. It, it still feels properly fast, this car. But there are elements, lots of elements, I'm afraid, that really do feel absolutely from yesteryear. I mean, this switch gear <laughs> is, well, even 10 years ago, you could kind of pick holes in it because you could go well that's from a Fiesta and that's from a Jaguar XK8 and that's from a Focus and 10 years later well time has not treated the interior of the Vanquish very well it feels like an antique in here but the dials okay I can't really see what they say but they look beautiful and you know bottom line you downshift a couple of gears with the rather old-fashioned paddle shift 
sort of manual, sort of auto gearbox. Put your foot down and this is what you get. I mean, that that is still properly fast. Even maybe in that But overall, the driving experience, well, I don't know. It really does feel, if you were being polite, you'd call it quaint. If you were being honest, you'd call it a bit of a dinosaur. But I don't know, sometimes there's a place for dinosaurs in this world, and this car is not without charm. It never was, and it never will be, because it was really kind of the last of the big, hand-built, hairy, Larry, not very competent Astons. And you have to love it for that. Even though in every way imaginable, it gets mullered by the new car. Right, conclusion. There is no getting away from it. The old car feels old and the new car feels razor sharp and absolutely bang up to date. I'd underrated the latest Vanquish a bit until now. But having spent this day in it, I think it's sensational. I think it's a really, really good GT car. Worth every single one of its £190,000. And I didn't think I could ever say that.